Hi everyone and welcome to episode 162 of Saranova Crafts. I'm your host Jessica. I can be found as Saranova on Ravelry and Instagram. Excuse me, on Ravelry and Twitter and as Saranova Crafts on Instagram. Um, I'm going to try to do show notes. I might actually do show notes. We'll see if I get show notes. If I do show notes, they'll be on my blog and in the Ravelry group. Links down below. If I don't get around to them, feel free to drop any questions you have in the YouTube comment section. Likes, subscribes, comments are all very much appreciated. Um, even a thumbs down means I know you watch the thing. So hey, I'm not going to complain. Um, in case you're wondering, um, I bought a backdrop. This is actually like a fabric and I bought a stand for it. Um, the stand is a little annoying because it can only be one width. So I'm going to get some PVC that can go over like the top bar. Um, to make it shorter because I don't need a 10 foot wide stand when I only need to record like three feet across So, you know, but hey, I have a nice backdrop now and you're not seeing like my cluttered upstairs or my couch or something, right? Hey, this looks more professional kind of sort of maybe Anyways, um, there's been a lot going on the last time I posted an episode was it's been a while It's been a hot minute because it is now July and I posted When did I post this one? Um, over a month ago. So, uh, the last episode I posted was well over a month ago. Um, I have just not, you know, I think this is a thing that happens every summer. I hit a down in my crafting every summer. I think I might be starting to avoid it this summer, though, because I had a slightly crazy idea. If you're wondering what the crazy idea was, I'm going to say it here in this video as opposed to just teasing it on social media. Hi Zoe, I know there's something in the kitchen. Technically sitting in the kitchen. There's a buzz in the background, that's the air conditioner, and I'm not going to turn it off because otherwise I would be sweating like nobody's business. And the moving backdrop would be the cat. Because it doesn't, um, hey! Cat! Hey! Because the backdrop doesn't hang just to the floor, it's got like this much that's like laying on the floor. So, you know. But anyways, um, I've had a lot going on. I have some stuff that, I have a finished object that I don't physically have, so I'm going to show you a picture on my phone. Or actually, I'll just put in the picture in post. Um, I have a project, I have a crochet project I've been working on. I have my knit socks that I've had on the needles for friggin' forever. Um, I have the mystery project I've been teasing on social, and I got some free stuff over the weekend. So, yeah, let's just get started with the finished object. I finished the second Spitfire. I know I showed it off in the last video, um, but I did finish it. I have handed it over to the dyer, so I now have nothing to do with it anymore. It's theirs. I have it. Where's my picture of it? Did I go past it on my phone? Yes, I did. Where are you? Come on. There it is. So, pictures in here aren't the greatest. I'll trim them, and um, but it's black on one side, which is the colorway Jet. So this is um, this was knit out of 100 Ravens Iacos, and the colorway is Jet, which is the black. So you can see. Um, jet in the black, and, in, and the other colors, the like blue, green, yellow, is a colorway called Someone in the Crowd. And, um, I did block it lightly before I gave it to them, but, um, it has been handed over, and, um, yeah, that's, that's done. Um, and I've also started on another project for them. I picked up this cute bag. This is a cute sheet bag. I picked up this cute bag. It's got a hard bottom on it, too. Um, when I went strapless bra searching for my wedding dress. Um, but anyways, uh, I started a twisted minstrel for 100 Ravens to have in their booth. This past weekend I worked a crochet show, um, in Manchester. It was the CGOA, which is the Crochet Guild of America's annual conference. Um, that's a pencil, not the thing, but that's okay. Um, so, I've, I'm about, I'd say, maybe halfway through this. Um, I didn't get it done for the show, but I'm hoping to get it done soon-ish so that they can have it in their booth just as a crochet sample. The pattern is called Twisted Minstrel. This is actually the second one I've done. If you remember way back in 2017, I did one of these. I think it was 2017. Um, but here it is. 
So it's done with the mini skein set. There we go. The, the corner here got folded over, but it is a corner. Um, so it's a mini skein set. So I started with the greens, and it's going to end with like a deep fuchsia. But you do these little, um, what are they called? Like ruffles on the edge. See here? Right? So you have to like really pin it out to, to get it. Um, but, you know, so that's the crochet project I've been working on. I started that a week ago yesterday. Cat! See, this is a new toy for the cats. And um, I might have to like, go shut them in the bedroom or something because they are going to bring the whole thing crashing down on me. Because it's, it's a very lightweight stand. So Nibbler, who is 28 pounds, could very easily pull it over onto me, which I don't want to happen. Um, but anyways, yeah. So I was at the crochet show this weekend. I worked their booth for them since they needed a weekend off because everything's been crazy since April. Um, I, we, we, I was sitting next to the DFW booth, and so the ladies there were very nice, and they gave me a tote bag. Give me a tote bag, DFW. And all this, their sponsors on the back. It's a very nice, very roomy tote bag. I'm quite happy with it. I also got a uh, free copy of this issue of Crochet Magazine. Um, it's the the spring 2019 one, so it's nice and recent. There's a lot of good patterns in here, actually. There's a couple of things in here that I actually want to make. I don't, I'm not normally a crocheter, but um, there are, if I can flip to the last page, there's actually quite a few things in here that I'm interested in. Like, you can see that there's, like, a good variety of stuff in here. So, um, so I'm excited about that. Um, I did um, talk with... The woman in the booth across the way, who is Fairy Tail Knits, and I'm going to be starting a sample for her. It's called Warwick Reflections. Apparently, it was originally a knit along. So when I printed out the directions, it said knit along. Um, but I will pull up a picture on Ravelry for you. Um, but she gave me yarn. She's um, Fairy Tail Knits. She gave me the yarn to do this because I'm going to do a sample for her, and then I'll, you know, it's one of those things where I knit yarn, I get yarn. So I'm not complaining. Um, let's see, go to my queue, no, not my wish list, my queue, thank you, Rav. And I want a picture of, like, the whole thing. That's a good enough picture. So, oh yeah, you can see my ring light, ha 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 ha, because I got a ring light. Um, so I will pop in a, uh, here, you can't, so you can see, um, I don't think it's actually brioche. But it's one of those weird, like, alternate rows slip stitch things. So I'm excited to try it. And, um, excuse me, I need a drink of water. She gave me two skeins, which I've already caked up. Or, well, half caked up. Because one of them decided not to cake. So... So, this one, which has a little bit of sparkle to it, I don't know if you can see the sparkle. Hey, there, you can see the sparkle there. Okay, so you can see the sparkle. So this is Fairy Tail Knits Shining Armor in the colorway Common Welsh Green. Whoop, hell, stop rolling off my lap. So here's the info. So it's 92% superwash, merino, 8% lurex. It's four ounces, about 409 yards. It's a fingering rate, machine wash, lay flat to dry. So, and the colorway common, so this is the colorway common Welsh green. And then the other one is not a sparkly one, but it is um, Fairy Tail Knits Queen's Fingering. It's 100% superwash merino. Three and a half ounces, 490 yards, so that makes it more of a light fingering. And this is in the colorway Nagini. So, as you can see, did not want to cake. The ball winder was having some problems, so I ended up just hand winding it around the, uh... You can see there's some variation in the skein. Um, but I'm excited to work with it, so these will be super fun together, in my opinion. These will be super fun. And, uh, 
I got the pattern last night, so I got emailed the pattern last night by the designer, so I am very excited to get started. Excuse me for the funny facial expressions, I'm really trying not to burp right now. I'm like, this ring light is making me look horrible, but I really don't care because I did not have the get up and go to put makeup on this morning. I just really didn't. I just <sighs> threw my hair in a low ponytail, threw on a shirt because I don't have to work today, and you know what? Screw it. I do not have the energy. Anyways, um, the other thing I'm working on is I'm back to working on the sock I keep in my purse, which I really should finish. Um, I'm almost to the cuff. This is sock one. So I'm almost... I like my socks to be tall, so what I do is I work it even with the foot length, and then I do the cuff. Um, so that's why it's so long. But um, yes, I'm almost in the first sock, then I'll cast on the second sock. And finally, the mystery project. So I have mentioned before I'm getting married this September. September, I'm getting married September 22nd. And I, and over the weekend, well, on Friday, I had a rather insane idea. That involves 3,000 size 8 seed beads and a giant lace shawl. If you guys have any idea, then you will know that um, this pattern has been a lot of, over a thousand people have made it, but not everyone, you know, it's one of those patterns where it's like somebody's, a lot of people go someday, someday, right? Um, so... You know, it's one of those patterns where everyone goes, someday, someday, because it's just such a uh, pattern. But, if you recognize this image, you know what I'm going to be making. i am decided that I'm going to attempt to knit an even star with a beaded border for my wedding in my shade of blue. So, 100 Ravens Tardis Blue is basically the color I've chosen for my wedding. So I had Becca, since Becca, who's the main dyer in charge, um, since Becca was dyeing on Friday, I sent her a message going, hey, could you dye two skeins of your lace for me in TARDIS? So here's the second skein that I haven't balled up yet. It doesn't have a label because she didn't bother, because, you know, we know what it is. Um, but I balled up the first skein. So the thing about her lace skeins, they're over 900 yards. This is over 900 yards. I'm serious, this is over 900 yards. So I only need two to do a giant six foot shawl because the shawl calls for 1500 yards and these two together is over almost 1900 yards. So, have enough yardage. So nice fat skeins, because these are four gram skein, four ounce um, hanks of lace. So like, you know, it's funny. She handed them to me and she's like, hang these up when you get home because they're not quite dry yet. But. This is basically my shade of blue because I'm doing like a royal blue and TARDIS blue is basically a royal blue. So, um, so I've already started the pattern. I'm almost done. I'm about two thirds of the way through the first of four charts. I'm not going to like give away too many details. Um, I did knit the swatch, which did I throw it in the bag or do I have it on the couch somewhere? No, it's not in the bag and it's, which means it's somewhere over there, which means I'm not going to go find it right now. But I also got beads, so these are the beads I'm going to use. They're clear with like a silver lining, because the wedding colors are blue and silver. So, um, so I've started the first, so I'm on the first chart. I have not yet finished the first chart, but I will, um, which is better, but I'll attempt to like hold it up so you can see some of the lace. Whoop, hello, drop a stitch. Nope, bad, bad, bad. Come back here, come back here, come back here. Come back here. No, 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 bad. There we go. Yes, is that the only stitch I dropped? Okay. So I'm going to push that down on the needle. So it starts in the center and works out. So I'm on a really short needle right now. But you um, can kind of get an idea of the pattern. So like I said, I'm on the first chart. So you basically do a pie shawl until the first chart, and then you start the first chart. So... That's the even star pattern. So, I'm getting there. Um, I have a few rows left in the first chart, then it's on to, then you do like the pie increases, then second chart. Um, this is a paid pattern. I did buy the, um, the larger ebook it comes in, um, as opposed to buying the individual pattern, because I liked a lot of the patterns in the ebook. Not quite all of them, but I'd say I liked like, excuse me, I'd say I liked like two thirds of what was in the ebook. 
so I decided to just get it because, you know, if I like two-thirds of what's in there, it's worth it, right? So, um, so yeah, so that's everything that's been going on. It's been busy. We finally have our photographer. Thank you, Carol, for recommending the woman. She's available. We're going with her. Um, yeah, you know, uh, summer, my summer hours have changed the show, so I have more time in my day. I'm actually going to go to knitting at my Barnes & Noble group. As soon as I'm done recording, I'm going to head south for that. Um, and then I'm not, I'm not calling it babysitting. I'm calling it, you know, just hanging out. So my uncle has a doctor's appointment this afternoon. He wants me to be there to keep an eye on my grandmother. Now, it's not that grandma needs to be babysat. She's not like, you know, she's, she's still with it mentally and stuff. It's more insurance to have someone there in case she falls down. So it's not, so she's, because she's a little unsteady on her feet, but beyond that, she's fine. Like, she's fully capable of getting up and getting herself a drink of water. The issue is, is like, if she slips and falls in the bathroom, like she, if she goes to the restroom and she falls, then you, then she, they need someone there to pick her up, um, because she's still living at home. So my uncle asked me to come by this afternoon and just stay with grandma, which I'm totally fine with. I like spending time with grandma. I enjoy spending time with grandma. And so I'm not going to complain about getting more time with her especially considering she's 98. So, but there was this whole big fiasco with the wedding invitations, right? So, I sent my aunt and uncle, one of my aunts and uncles, wedding invitation. And their kids got it, so my cousins got the invitation, but my aunt and uncle didn't. And so they were like, oh, I guess we're just not invited to the wedding. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? I sent you a friggin' invitation, right? Well, it turns out, because in my defense, these numbers are right next to each other on a keyboard, because I did nice printed labels for the envelopes and I bought clear labels so you know it didn't look like this white rectangle on the envelope the four and the five are right next to each other I accidentally sent their invitation to number four instead of number five on their street everything else on the address was correct I had the street name I had the town I had the state I had the zip code everything else was correct just went to number four instead of number five and for some reason their neighbors did not go and hand it over don't ask me why their neighbors didn't go and hand it over but they didn't so I emailed them another one with a handwritten note inside that said, you know, I'm sorry for the mess up. I accidentally sent this to number four. We look forward to seeing you at the wedding, a.k.a. You know, I didn't say please come, but it was basically a please come. Yes, you're actually invited. Because they were like, oh, we'll just look after, you know, our grandkids then. Because they were going to look after my cousin's kids. And I'm just like, but you guys are invited to the wedding. And their response was, well, we didn't get an invitation. I'm like, but I mailed you an invitation. So, like, ugh. Thank goodness this is the only issue we've had. Like, my aunt is a little much sometimes, I'll say. To put it nicely, she's a bit much sometimes. So I'm not surprised it kind of got blown out of proportion that this complete accident of four and five are right next to each other on the keyboard. I'm sorry, I didn't catch it. I don't actually mail you stuff on the regular, so I don't have your address memorized. But like, you know. Um... I did get a new phone case. I don't know if you guys noticed. It says, I'm a Caterhorn. The, the horn got a little bit cut off because of the cutout for the fingerprint reader, but it's like, I'm a Caterhorn. I thought it was cute. I actually bought a whole bunch of, like, $1 cases off the internet because I thought they'd be cute, and I just like to change it up, you know? And for a buck, you know, I got, like, six. So, you know, spent six bucks. I got six phone cases. One is clear. The others have all these designs on them. Um... But yeah, so, um, that's pretty much it. I'm pretty much going to be working on the Even Star and the sample, which is this stuff, um, you know, which is Warwick Reflections, um, because I got to cast that on, but, um, yeah, should be good. I'm excited to get going on Warwick Reflections. I've already started Even Star. That's going really nicely. The pattern's actually, the pattern looks more complicated than it is, I'll say that. Like, it's not... It's finicky, but it's not terribly difficult as long as you actually pay attention. Like, so, the charts are a little funky, so I actually have, when I'm working on it, I have the written directions and the chart next to each other, so I can double check, because there's certain rows where, like, you have to, sh excuse me, I don't know, know why I keep yawning. Okay. There's certain rows where you have to shift the stitch markers, and if you notice, I'm not doing stitch markers in between the repeats, I'm only doing the beginning of round, because it's easier, because you have to shift stitch markers. And I'm lazy. So, you know. But anyways, um, I think that is everything. 
thank you so much for watching. It has been a very long time since I updated, and I'm sorry about that. I'm going to try to update more regularly. I won't say weekly, but, you know, more than once a month. Um, like, subscribes, comments are all very much appreciated. Um, I did start a side channel, which I may or may not link down below. I haven't updated that in a while. I feel like I should update that, too. But anyways, um, I gotta pack up, gotta go to knitting, and I will see you guys next time. So, like I said, if you like this, please give it a like. If you have any questions, please drop a comment down below. And if you want to see more of my rambling to the camera, please subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!